Good afternoon, everybody. This video today is a request of a friend, and it's how to do credits and debits within Excel, also known as the general journal. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, when you're trying to do a general journal, you're usually given numbers that you have to plug in into the journal. So it'll say something like earned $2,000 cash service on such and such date and then you want to plug it in. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So when you're starting in Excel, the first thing you want to do is create labels before you do anything else. So you can see here in A1 that I put the date, B1 I put the account name, and D1 is debit, and an E1 is credit. This is so when you set everything up, you can put down the date, and you can put down the account that you were given within within whatever sheet you have, whether it's for homework or from your boss, and then you'll be able to debit or credit account. So let's go through a few scenarios here. Okay, so from the sheet I had, September 1st, I was given $2,000 cash for common stock. So what you're doing here is you're saying that cash increased and cash increased because it was given to you. So you're gonna debit that $20,000 because anytime you earn cash or you're given cash, you debit it. Now on the other hand, common stock went up, so you're crediting common stock $20,000. And the reason you're crediting common stock is because it's just like how the stock market works. If you sell stock, you make money, but your stock prices go up. So the more people that buy your stock, the more your market value of your stock is going to go up. So in this case, you sold stock to get to $20,000, and that's how you got the $20,000 cash, which increases the market value of your stock. So your common stock will be credited. So this isn't saying you have $40,000, but what it is saying is, you put down in the debit section that you earn $20,000 cash and you put down in the credit section that the way you earned the $20,000 cash was by selling comic stock. That's all that means because when you're doing accounting, everything has to be balanced on both sides of the account. So a good way to think of your debits is the left side of your equation and your credits as the right side of the equation just to make things easier. Now, in the next scenario, we have September 5th that I purchased equipment for $9,000. So, for equipment, we're going to debit the $9,000 because that's the amount I spent on it. Then, for September 5th, we're also going to put down all the other information that I have here, which is for September 5th, I spent a little bit of cash, which was $3,000, and then there was a loan on September 5th for $6,000, which would be the accounts payable. So in this scenario, which can actually be a little tricky, the way you would explain this is actually rather simple, though it may seem a little confusing. So if I have equipment for $9,000, but I only spent $3,000 of the company's cash, and the other 6000 is on account, which means we did a loan for it, you would say that your cash decreased by $3,000. So now you're going to credit cash. When you earn cash, you debit it. When you're spending cash, you credit it. So it's actually the opposite, which should make sense to you. So we're crediting that we spent cash, $3,000 worth. Then for accounts payable for September Fitch, which is again the loan, we are crediting $6,000. Now, the thing with liabilities, like accounts payable and loans, you credit it when you take one out, but you debit it when you're paying some of the money back. So since we're taking out the 6000 to pay for this, because it's a liability, we're crediting that this is a liability that we have to pay later. So if we look at September 5th once again here, you'll see that, the equipment that was debited for 9000 now balances out because we paid $3,000 cash 
and the other 6,000 we're doing as on account, which is putting us to $9,000 because we have 3,000 for the cash and credit and 6,000 for the accounts payable credit, which makes 9,000. Then for our debit for September 5th, the equipment that was purchased is $9,000. So you have 9,000 on your left side and you have a total of 9,000 on your right side, which makes it balanced. Even if you look back at example one here for September 1st with the cash, where we earned the cash and got to $20,000, you'll see that we showed that we were credited 20,000 for the common stop going up because we sold the common stop, which made that a part of the equation balance as well. Because we credited 20,000 showing it was for selling the common stop and 20,000 for the cash. So in both scenarios, you see the equation is balanced with the number being on both sides. So one more scenario I'll give you just so I'm giving you an example, but not being too much in your heads because I don't want to make this video too long, but just a brief example so you understand the scenario. We have September 8 here. And for September 8, I have earned money of $18,000. So we go ahead and adult its accounts receivable. Now, what accounts receivable means is it's money that someone owes you normally for a service, but you didn't quite get that money yet. So you're going to get the money, but you didn't get it yet. So you debit the accounts receivable, meaning, hey, this is $18,000 we're supposed to get for the company. Then on September 8, if you look at the service sales down here, which like I told you, accounts receivable is usually money you get for a service. We credited it $18,000. So in this case right here, we're saying that the money that we're owed for this service was $18,000 and we'll be getting that money soon. And for the service sale, which is the service we provided, we credit that we did the service for this person for $18,000. So both sides of the account balance because the person has to pay us $18,000 because we provided the service and we've shown that the service was credited and has been done on September 8 by putting the $18,000 in the credit. So you have $18,000 on the left side of the equation and $18,000 on the right side of the equation. It's a little difficult at first until you get used to it, but all you really have to remember is when you're doing accounting, the left side and the right side of the equation both have to be balanced. So whenever you're doing a general journal, Make sure when you're putting logs within specific dates and within specific account names that you remember exactly what needs to be debited, what needs to be credited, and why. And once you start to understand that better, it'll be easier to put in your general journal. If any of you guys are still confused and you want that to be explained a little bit more in depth than what I did, please let me know in the comment sections below and I'll try to explain a little more. But this is just the basic concept of how it works. And for those of you that already do like accounting classes or do accounting at your jobs, you, you probably understand from this video exactly why debits and credits were put in certain positions from what I explained. Anyhow, I am signing off for today. Thanks for watching.